Okay. Hi. This is yeah. a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate women breastfeeding. This is Black Breastfeeding Week. Who would have imagined there would ever be such a thing or a need for such a thing? But in honor of Black Breastfeeding Week, I would like to introduce and share what I'm going to call elder speak. People are old enough to be your mom or your grandma that have nursed a baby or two. And just to hear what it was like for them, what is it that they would like for you to know and to hear their stories. So I'd like to introduce you to my, my friend. I think, did we meet because of breastfeeding? Uh, yeah, we met yeah. because okay. of breastfeeding. Okay, I think I met Ginger Welch in 19... 1980, and this is August 24th, 2022. So that's how long we have known each other. And I had heard about her. I'd heard about her from La Leche League. And I would go to a La Leche League meeting in the DC area, Washington, DC. And they say, are you Ginger? <laughs> no, I'm Ginger. And they would say, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. We thought you were Ginger. And is this, and who was this little darling? And I had a, not a toddler, but a nine month old, a 10 month old who was walking and nursing and talking as I recall. And they said, oh my goodness, we've never seen anything like this. And then they kept saying, you must meet Ginger, you must meet Ginger. So I figured out that I was, maybe the only black woman in the room or at the picnic or wherever we were. So it must be ginger. And so I must be ginger. I wasn't offended, but I began to think, God, I want to meet ginger. Do I look like ginger or am I the only other black woman breastfeeding in Washington, DC in 1980? Uh, 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 and, uh, at that time, I, I don't think I was thinking about weaning or I don't think I had any questions. It's just I thought it would be nice to be around some other women uh, who were nursing babies. And um, DC was my mother's home. And I had just returned there to, why did I come back? I think I had come back to go to graduate school at Howard. And I wanted to connect with other women who were nursing their babies. And that's how I met Ginger. And I think when I met her, she said, you must be Jackie. And this must be Amber Joy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we have been friends ever since. So, and with that, our elder speaks on nursing your baby. That La, that La Leche League is a, a lifesaver. Changed my life. I, um heard about it for the first time when I was in college down okay. in North Carolina and I just sort of dismissed it you know like who, who, who are these white women getting together talking about breastfeeding I don't understand um but but I also had absolutely no understanding about breastfeeding you know okay. never having uh seen it done uh -huh. and so you know years passed and you there had I seen it done or you hadn't seen it done I had not I had not seen it done Wow, me neither. Um, not my mother. She used uh, canned milk and Cairo syrup. Okay, well. Yeah, well. she made her own. She made her own formula for her babies, um, and so when I had a baby, one of the questions, of course, comes up is, "Are you going to breastfeed?" And <clears throat> and and again, this this article I read about how people, you know, know it's a good thing. Well. You know, I had sort of heard about it and well, well, maybe. Um, oh, well, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that. You know, sort of in, in the delivery room or in, you know, when they bought the baby. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really prepared or, or thought about it in advance. Mm -hmm. And uh, ended up with lots of hospital related problems, you know, like- Can I ask a question? I just realized, I 
you had not seen a baby breastfed until after you had a baby or you when did you go to your first league meeting before the baby or after the baby? after after and how old was your baby when you went there i i don't remember that very young days weeks okay and were you already nursing when you went there or sort of kind of um I, I was trying but i really didn't know what i was doing and I, I didn't have any help. Nobody, okay. nobody okay. around me, you know, knew anything about breastfeeding. And we ended up at Dr. Dickey's office, okay. the world's greatest pediatrician. Um, and he had a, a nurse in his office and she, she came in, you know, to help me with the breastfeeding. And she told me about La Leche League. And- Can I ask, was she black or white? White woman, okay. White woman. He he was white. She was white, and La Leche League was white. Okay. But but I, I I wanted to I wanted this for my baby. At some point, you know, I I wanted this, and so let let me go where I need to go to get the information I need, <clears throat> and I ended up in <laughs> some white lady's you know apartment downtown, and I'm like, okay. Um, th th these are the people who have the information I need, then I need to get the information here. Did you, and, have, any, did you have any white friends before that? Had you ever been to a white girl's house before? Um, no, okay. never. Mm -hmm. Certainly had never seen a white woman's nipple. <laughs> <laughs> it was an eye-opening day. Oh, it's like, okay, that's a whole nother culture here. But they have the information that I need. These women are successfully doing what I want to do. Um, so it was like her living room or her backyard? Like, where were you? It, it was in the, in the living room of, of the lady's apartment. And there probably were six women, you know, and <laughs> white women and me. Okay, okay. Um, but I saw them be successful at this. And I'm like, this, this is a really good thing here. Um, and then, you know, they, they introduced me to the whole piece of mothering your baby through breastfeeding. Oh. And I'm, I'm like, I, 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 I like this idea here. What a concept. Oh. Oh. And try as I might with that child, I was not uh, successful in nursing him. Oh. You know, he ended up on a bottle and- Was he your first? He was the first. He was, was the he first. Was he born in North Carolina or was he born in DC? In DC, North oh. Carolina, no, DC. He was born at Washington Hospital Center, um, you know, where my daughter is now a brand new nurse. Uh, in labor and delivery. In labor and ah. delivery. Uh, but I stayed with La Leche League because they had something I wanted. Their their philosophy. They introduced me some, to things related to parenting that that were unfamiliar to me, but I liked. Um, mm -hmm. And so it it watching the success of of other women uh, and and deciding that I could have that success too. Uh, was was part of the, the the special part of mothering all these children mm -hmm. you know so so though i held my first baby close um and fed him with a bottle as if i was nursing him mm -hmm. um i said the next time i'm, I'm gonna do whatever it takes <coughs> to make this work because i know that that it can work there there is a solution um out there uh -huh. and the, the other thing that helped to make it work for me is not only having good information and support, it was the privilege of being able to stay home with my baby. Oh. Oh. So that, that combination of believing that this was a, a really good thing, finding good resources, um, and then combining that with the ability to stay home and do this Mm -hmm. um, helped us be successfully breastfeed a whole bunch of children. Mm -hmm. And and 
I noticed that you said um, you said you weren't successful. I'm I'm not sure why you said that, but how long do you remember how long it was that you nursed that first young man? That that was uh, Ryan. Uh, what what made you stop and did you feel bad about stopping or you felt like I you nursed him up long enough? Do you remember any of that? Um, I remember the the simple mechanics of latching on was a challenge. I hadn't seen it. I didn't know whether it was working or not working, but probably the, the piece that made the difference in my stopping was the fact that he wasn't gaining weight, oh, okay. which meant, you know, which was interpreted as, you know, he was not getting enough um, oh. breath milk. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've never heard this part of this. I mean, I've heard this story, but I never heard this part of the story. And, and how old is Mr. Ryan now? 40 something or rather, okay. 40, 40 something other. It was further complicated the whole situation when he was the Ryan was producing these um, soft, mushy, caramel colored stools all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And the, the pediatrician who was working with me at the time, you know, interpret this as diarrhea. And this is a problem and the child ended up in the hospital and, you know, Again, after the fact, you know, I learned that dumb, dumb, is, dumb is dirt. Yeah, dumb, just dumb. You know, I'm sitting there in the hospital with my baby, saying, you know, can I, can I breastfeed him? No, we, you know, we, we, we need to. You can't do that because that might be making him sick. I'm like, well, if, ah! if it's making him sick, maybe you want to just check that, and by letting me nurse him, you know, just dumb and blind leading the blind. Um, of course, what I learned in La Leche League and with the next baby is what I was looking at was perfectly normal poop for this baby at this point in his life. Yeah. But even the pediatrician didn't know that because yeah. where would he have known anything about a breastfeeding baby? Because they just had they never seen one either. Yeah. They'd never seen one either. They never counseled a woman who was breastfeeding, you know, I mean, just by luck. Did I end up in Dr. Dickey's office with the nurse sending us to La Leche Lee? Yeah. And you know, it's funny that you're you're saying that because I think I learned that I think my first La Leche League meeting uh was before I had the baby, but just not that far in advance. So when I got back, I had met them, but uh, my memory was that La Leche Lee, you had to go to four meetings. And one, they recommended that you come before you had the baby. And I'm like, I don't know if I can, it was about 40 miles from where I lived. Whoa. And I had been to white people's houses before, but I was in a car with somebody that I didn't know, going to somebody's house that I didn't know. And they were they were really nice. It wasn't like they were not warm, but you know, they opened up the door and they were like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I remember somebody saying, Well, when you nurse the baby, mustard comes out. And th the more they nurse, it just squirts out all over the place. And it's it smells good, but at the time I thought. My, you know, I was listening to this conversation just thinking, what are they talking about? But then when I nursed my baby and almost instantly within nursing, it, it started squirting out and, and I hadn't put the diaper on and it was like mm. mustard. It was like they, we were, you know, I remember uh, my husband saying, what, what do you have a hot dog here? What is it? What is all of the, do yeah. you, you went to college don't you know how to do nothing can you put the diaper on the baby and he was nursing and it was squirting out the side and i was laughing but i was like i think this is okay because the girl said that 
what if they nurse and it squirts out then you know we were just all shaking our head and um that's funny i hadn't thought about that i hadn't thought about that in a while so back to back to your story about successful so you probably nursed him for a couple of months or a couple of weeks and then switched him over to the bottle because they said you were starving him yeah i would i would say a couple of weeks okay yeah yeah and 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 dr dickey who will always i was always felt bad that i didn't have him uh having a pediatrician who was both supportive of breastfeeding uh, and had seen a breastfed baby or two probably helped. Uh, and and you, part of the- Vicky with Ryan or with the next baby? I we had know. Dr. Dickey with Ryan. It mm -hmm. was in Dr. Dickey's office that I learned about La Leche League, but then Dr. Dickey was away and there was another doctor on call. Okay. That was the, the dumb doctor. Yeah, that was the dumb doctor. Um, yeah. So, okay. you know, then we mo moved to the second baby and, the, you know, a whole different experience. So you have, you we, we know, we fast forward, we know that you have four children, but the first one came and then how long after did you have the second one? Two years. Two years, and you had a made up mind about the breastfeeding by then? Absolutely. Okay. The, the, the breastfeeding and the childbirth and the, the whole thing. It's like, okay. I, I, I have seen how this can be done and I, I can make this, make this work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though your experience with the La Leche League women did you become friends with them? Did, did that become part of your support system? Uh, it, it became part of my support system for many years. Okay. Um, uh, it's, it's how I met my um, bestest friends. Um, I, I stayed with the organization and trained and became a La Leche League leader and counseled a mm -hmm. lot of women on how to be successful with breastfeeding. Wow. We had a, a, a baby, one of my daughter's friends had a baby just recently. And this was the third of three sisters um, to, to have a baby. Yeah. And the first one, I went to her house and taught her how to breastfeed and supported her in it. And she she has taken it from there. It's just no question in their family that this is how they're going to mother their children. You yeah. know, the, the sisters have taken it in to the max. It's it's really good to see. When I met you, were you already a leader then? Or on your way to becoming a low leader? I, I don't I don't know. I don't remember the, the time frame, except you can't be a La Leche leader leader until after you've successfully nursed a baby. So I had to have a had to have Corey and been successful in nursing Corey in order to go through the training process to be a leader. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if I ever met another Black La Leche League leader. I think you're the first and only one that I've met. I may have met others, um, hmm. but I don't. I don't recall. Uh, so, so you would be famous in my book, and I think by the time I met you. You had Corey, mm -hmm. you had Mara, so you oh. you were a leader, but I don't think yeah. I had gone to your series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the other thing I wanna say about the meetings that I want you to go on to talk about the next three babies. Um, 
you're reminding me that I had, these were the women who parented the way that I had read about parenting and fantasized about parenting, but I had never met them. You know, it's like I found my peeps. Mm -hmm. And um, their homes, how their houses were set up, how their bedrooms were set up, how their living rooms were set up, how their kitchens were set up. Uh, it's not that I didn't know people like that, but in my world, um, I, I didn't know anybody that had a baby. Most of the people in my life thought I had lost my freaking mind. Mm -hmm having a baby, uh, I, I, I don't think I had as much time, unworking time at home, though, though most of my time was spent uh, mothering and being a, a, an, an at-home mom. I, I was working also, but I, I think that this notion that not being separated from your baby like, why would you even have a baby? <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to separate it from them. I, and think then, that, I think that that is a pause. I think that's just such an important point. Okay, let's pause. Um, why would you even have a baby? But I, I also want to say that at that point in my life, and maybe for you too, I mean, I know you well enough to know it was a factor, but I want to bring out that I, I was prepared, preparing for my career and my education. And, and other than the women in La Leche League, everyone else saw that as a conflict and a barrier. Mm -hmm. Lord of Jesus, why you have that baby ruin your life? You're going to get fat. Your titties are going to fall in your lap. Your husband's going to leave you. Nigga's going to leave you. You know, all of that. So like, really? You know, it was like, I didn't have anyone. That's not true. Let me, let me back up. My, so my mother don't raise up out the grave here. My mother was very supportive. And she got the conflict between what, what she would call being an old first time mom. But my mother was very clear with me. My mother had had very serious postpartum depression that she thought was related from being separated from me. But she also said that she wanted to have a career and that she wanted to be um, mindful of the sacrifices that she had made for her career and that somehow being a mom was in conflict with that. And she was hoping that I didn't see it that way, that it wasn't that way. And surely I would be able to figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. She didn't know how. <laughs> yeah. But she, she's like, okay, bless you, my child. I wasn't able to do this and I almost lost my mind. Mm -hmm. And I thought I had lost you. But... Mm -hmm. And, and and I think my mom also said to me, maybe not in ways that I can completely understand, is that work is going to be there. School is going to be there. That this is a really, really precious time in your life. And you went to the trouble of having this baby. You act like you like them. Mm -hmm. and I don't know mm -hmm. why you like that man that you agree you, you agree to marry him. So mm. it's a little late to be having second thoughts now. Why don't you see how you could make this work? Why don't you enjoy this one year? Mm -hmm. you'll, get, you'll get back to everything else. Everything else can wait. Well, that was good support. Oh my God, I, I, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, well, what about law school? And what about this? And what about that? And when you go make some money? And when you go find a babysitter? And I remember telling my mother that um, 
I didn't want to leave my baby until they could tell me what happened while I was gone. And she yeah. just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. That's, that's a nice marker there. <laughs> that's a nice marker. Yes, what I, happened? I, what happened while I was away? Mm -hmm. What you do? What they say? Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good marker. Okay, so back to you. So we we had Ryan. Two years later, you had Corey. You had a made up mind. Yeah, had a made up mind. It it was good that she was my second baby, mm -hmm. um, because she was she was kind of scrawny. Oh, it was kind of wiry and scrawny and and I had made up my mind if I, you know, nursed her every time she opened her eyes, I'm not going to worry about it. She's going to, she, we're going to be all right. And how and, much did she weigh? Do you remember? Seven something. They, they, they got bigger each time. Okay. Six, six something, seven something, but she was wiry. She wasn't as hefty as the first ones. You know, that formula made him hefty, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mara was three years later. Uh -huh. And Traven was two years after that. Do you remember how long you um, breastfed uh, Corey before you started weaning and how long you breastfed Mara before you started weaning? and? How long? Well, I, I didn't I didn't wean any of them. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't I, I don't I don't consider that I weaned any of them. I just breastfed them until they just stopped. You know, it was I was no conscious effort to, you know, slowly cut back or I mean, no. <laughs> I remember sitting up at night. I don't remember which of the children it was, but it, it might've been Mara by then. I remember sitting up at night, um, waiting for her to wake up so that I could breastfeed her, so I could nurse her. Aww. And so that I could nurse her in the middle of the night when it was just she and I. It was and quiet. It was quiet. It was just one-on-one, -on -one, me and the, and, and the baby. Yeah. Um, and 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 then I noticed I kept waking up at night and I was the only one <laughs> waking up. And I thought, well, guess that's <laughs> done. I guess that's done. I yeah. remember I remember calling my grandmother and saying, he won't wake up. Is he sick? I keep waking him up. I keep putting my titty in his mouth. The milk is running all over the place. My titty's about to bust. And she just thought that was a fun. She said, child, leave that baby alone. Leave him alone. Be tired. He tired. Let him sleep. And I remember, uh, I remember there were other people, but in the middle of the night when I was lonely and my breasts were big and I had too much milk, uh, and I couldn't wake him up. I, I assumed he was sick. And she pointed out to me that he was fine. I was, <laughs> that was mm, so fine. You, you need the shower. And um, I'd forgotten that. that. That's a good memory. Did you, did you think that um, you were weird? Did you, did you think that was a weird thing? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word weird. Okay. Uh, I, I would say different. I, I was. Yeah. I was. I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I was different. I mean, I had more children than in anybody other than my sister-in-law. Uh -huh. I mean, just just from the very beginning, I was making choices that were very different than the way that um, I was raised or even expected. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I was different. I have a another friend, um, another midwife friend, and um, she was doing a little, uh, doing a workshop. Uh, Shafia, if you're listening or you ever get to listen to this, uh, shout out, I love you. I hadn't met anybody like you till many, many years later. 
but Shafia was is was doing this workshop on postpartum care, after birth care, and and one of the topics was pregnancy as joy, mothering as joy, and um, I felt very closeted about the joy I experienced. Uh, being alone with my baby, looking forward to having baby and nursing. I, I don't think I ever really talked about that. Uh, but it was something, nursing was something that I did for me. Because <laughs> it made my life more more better, easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I resisted the notion, it, it's funny that you said, I resisted the notion that somehow I was doing this because this was a really good thing for my little man. I don't even think I thought about that. Like if I did, it was like an afterthought or something to tell somebody that wasn't, um, it wasn't really a motivator at that point. I don't, I don't I'm not aware. Um, I'm not aware of that. I, I felt uncomfortable being separated from the baby and not nursing the baby. I, it, it was something that was very, uh, it was self, self-seeking, selfish, soothing behavior for me. It wasn't, you know, maybe later I thought about more things. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think I have thought about it like that very much. Mm -hmm. I think it 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 just seemed to be the a, a really good thing to do and on 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 so many levels and if I have a choice why not choose the really good thing to do for my baby and it became again part of a, a way of life mm -hmm. um, to do good things for the baby, um, good things for me too. I, I was just talking to my husband about, you know, parenting babies and, and he, he likes to tell people that he didn't really wake up at night to get a bottle to feed a baby, like, cause his wife was gonna do that. Now he would get up if I needed him to take the baby and go and be the daddy. But, you know, he counted on, you know, this is the way his children were being fed and raised and you know he had a part in this too mm -hmm. you know and so but, you weren't you weren't depriving your husband by not letting him get a bottle and, for the baby <laughs> You're yeah, quite we, 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 did, we didn't quite look at it like that you know um and and that worked and that worked for us that worked you know? for you Yep, I, I would nurse the baby on one nurse the baby on the other. Do all of that. And, and a lot of the times the baby and I would just, you know, everybody would just chill and go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. so it was nice to have over to the daddy and, you know, go for a while and, you know, go for a walk. Whatever y'all like to do, um, that, that was very helpful. Yeah. yeah. So. so I keep yeah. interrupting you with memories of my own, but so how long did you nurse Corey? Number two? Uh, a couple of years. Yeah. Well, maybe, you know, no, that's not right. I think they tended to, to stop coming a, around a year and a half. What are you? Yeah. Some, something around 18 months um, when she stopped. Waking up at night. Yeah, around there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And number three, same, better, same amount of time. Now, yeah. I know these two individuals are very different, but you had a similar nursing experience with number two and number three? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh-huh. And they stopped about the same time? Around the same time. That, that was sort of the average of uh, of all three of them, I think. I don't remember anybody nursing, you know, many months longer than that. So about a year and a half, and then they just 
Did you ever have the experience that you wanted to nurse, but they didn't want to? Or they were busy? Um, later on, not, not really at the beginning, um, unless one of the things that happened was the Mara maybe or Traven um, might be interested in breastfeeding and nursing. But when the other children would come along and, you know, getting ready to get involved in something, they would, you know, he would be done with mom and, you know, go behind the, the siblings. Yeah. Um, so again, looking forward to the nighttime nursings, um, just so that I could have that one-on-one -on -one time with them um, was just a part of the lifestyle thing, you know, family bed and all that stuff. I, I only have two children and they were almost six years apart to the day. So my experience was different in terms of uh, child spacing, but I've heard other women, other African women, other uh, women who, who live a much more uh, mammal attachment centered style parenting, Mm -hmm. uh, say that and 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 this is a really helpful point that nursing your baby is something that's private and quiet and if there are a lot of interruptions it doesn't happen I mean uh, because I'm a nurse and a nurse midwife and a lactation consultant and I read all these books which are not really helpful I'm going to say um there's something connected to this notion about the let down reflex and the intimacy that happens that if you have a lot of interruptions or or somebody's got a truck <laughs> or y'all are going someplace or daddy is whatever or the puppy or you know it's like I, I'll see ya. I, you you you're gonna be right there I, I'll be back and I, I think this notion that um, the child who feels safe and nurtured and getting their alone time with mom will venture out because you're going to be there when they get back and that you guys will catch up with each other, but other things may be equally interested. But this, in, in, in science circles, in nursing circles, they'll say, this is non-nutritive feeding. There's no need. There's no need for additional time here because <laughs> they're not getting nutrition. You know, so this notion about the hormone balance and oxytocin and letdown and all that stuff and privacy and quiet. And I'm looking at this beautiful black wall that you have behind me that reminds me of inside of being in the womb in a dark place that where we nurse our babies. Uh, for me, it wasn't about nursing in public. It was about nursing, having a, pri a private space to enjoy nursing, um, nursing my baby. I, I think it was, it was certainly both. Um... Mm -hmm. For me, um, the the quiet moments are 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 special, um, but but part of the reality of mothering four children is, uh, you know, um, you know, we tell the story about the first child and you know how we gave him a bath and you know it took an hour and a half and both of us were sweating and we had to have special <laughs> towels and special washcloths, and by the fourth baby, well, you know, I would get in the shower and he would somehow soap up the, the child, hand it in to me to rinse it off and go on and, you know, he's just got to keep it pushing. So, you know, I, I have nursed in a lot of, uh, a lot of places uh -huh. um, to, 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 to get it done and, and, and really have, have in, enjoyed it a lot. You know, yeah. I, I look at that, the, the privilege again of, of having these children and um, staying home and taking care of them as just a very, very special time in my life yeah. you know co college you know special time in your life careers are very special um 
having the children and, and learning about parenting and, you know, that, that is a very special. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to, what, to what do you attribute that privilege? What, what allowed that privilege to happen for you? What allowed that privilege to happen? Um, make, making the commitment to, to stay home with the children. Mm -hmm. um, and and put the career off until later, mm -hmm. and continuing to to work at that as a goal, even when it was even when it was hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did your did your partner, husband, spouse, baby father, did, was he in agreement with that with you, or did you have to convince him of that, or did he did it become more convincing <laughs> with each child? I'm, 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 I'm not actually sure of the, the answer to that. Okay. Um, we, yeah, we he, were just, he's, not, he's not here for us to ask him. Yeah, he, he, we, we were just talking about it in preparation for the interview. And, um, you know, he, he claims that he tried to um, get me to, to go back to work, you know, that, that this was, you know, something I should do. I mean, I got a college degree and then got another college degree, surely you would want to go to work. Um, and, you know, I, I just resisted that. You know, I, I remember being at a point where maybe I needed some extra support. And again, good old Dr. Dickey um, introduced me to homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Well, surely educating children in a small group I knew was better than sending your children off to be educated with 25 other kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. you know? And at that point I had a, a master's in teaching and it's like, this, this is a much better option to get them off to a good start. Let's, let's continue um, this involved style of parenting um, for a few more years. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, uh, I mean, I, I, I chose to homeschool it and he allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did did the decision for homeschooling was that part of the breastfeeding or just because you I hmm. I never it, it, I I mean I've known you a long time I but I never saw the link between homeschooling and nursing your baby. Could you talk more about that? Um it just seemed like a natural progression to me. You know, when you're nursing the baby, you're spending a lot of time one-on-one -on -one, um, and then you are doing that as a family. You are mm -hmm. together much more as a, a family. And uh, the homeschooling allowed the, the, the child and the family to stay together rather than having them go off and be educated. Um, and again, because I had I guess before I had the kids gotten the, the degree in teaching. Mm -hmm. And so once I was introduced to the idea, I, I bought into that this is a better option for them for a while. Mm -hmm. um, just to continue to stay together as a family because um, <clears throat> it's, it's better. Mm -hmm. Better for uh -huh. them, for you, or for everybody? It was a mutual beneficial I think it was beneficial to to everybody um, to to be able to utilize the resources of the city um, for them to spend a lot of time with their dad and with me. Um, mm -hmm. And then every now and then, when I was questioning, you know, is this a good idea? I would, you know, go to the local school and check it out, and then I would come back home committed, <laughs> committed, <laughs> committed to another couple of years of. You know, um, it, 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 it is one it, more it, year. <laughs> traditional education is, is just a big challenge for everyone. And I sort of felt like I, I had the opportunity once again to offer my children a better option. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember my kids, my, my kids, of course, were, your, were friends with your kids and they were like, 
they always thought that I was lazy and mean because I didn't home school. Yeah. Why aren't you like Mama Junior? We want to stay home with you. Don't make us go. Please don't make us go. Help, help us, please. I'll say Mama Ginger's a better mother than me. She she got a degree in that. <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't not, be not, as good. I wouldn't be as good at it. Not, I not, didn't not, buy not, it, but I did I did feel some pressure. Uh-huh. I, I felt pressure sometimes too. There were lots of people who need felt the need to explain to me why they were choosing what they were choosing, and that that was never necessary. Um, again, I just thought it was neat that that I did get to do have have gotten to do many of the things that I think are. are do you feel that you made um, financial sacrifices or career sacrifices? <laughs> And making <laughs> Can I say something funny? I'm losing you. <laughs> um, I, I wish I could figure out, I will figure out the, the politically correct way to say, no, I don't, I, I, let me see. Yes, I, I made financial sacrifices. Yes. Um, but I don't think we missed out on anything. Do you have regrets if you could do a do over? I, I don't have regrets in terms of making the choice to stay home and have my children and raise my own children mm -hmm. and educate my own children. Educate. Don't have regrets. Mm -hmm. no. When no. I when I studied education at Howard University and I learned about the history of what uh, black parents went to 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 assure not just literacy but that their children would be educated i i am my it warms my heart that that's what they were saying over and over and over and over and over again that it is an honor it is a privilege and i don't think that anybody can do it as well as i can do it and for many of our parents that may have had that opportunity stolen away and for them to look at us and be able to say, I worked really hard for you to be able to do this. Um, I just, I just want to, it resonates with me what you're saying. And I'm really honored that you've been my friend, but also that you, that you got a chance to do it. Did you want to have more kids? Is, was four enough? Um, four was uh, just the right number. Right number. It was not. I, I didn't plan to have four children, um, but but I, I, I want to, to go back to the, your train of thought where you were talking about um, black people in, in our history. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we have educated our own children from the very beginning. We had no choice, okay? Um, I'm not saying that we all got to send away to college. My sister and I are the first two people in our family to get college education. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to be able to educate my own children is, is a continuation of, of what we did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and I think being at an HBCU as an undergrad was was also a, a really good next step for me as a, a, a black woman, mm -hmm. you know, to be in in, in a higher education setting. Um, would, you, would you like to give a, a, a shout out to your HBCU? I, I'd like to give a shout out to North Carolina Central University. Thank you. Okay, Eagles. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very special four years getting that uh, degree and, and learning so much more about black people. I, I didn't realize how special it was until I went to grad school and it was a very different experience. I won't even mention, but um, yeah, it, it is a, a privilege. It has been a privilege. Um, and, and also um, getting my children ready for this next generation of, of things that we as black people have to experience. Um, I'm just so pleased that I have had um, children and grandchildren um, who are breastfed 
You know, this is not even a question in our family that this is how you parent, um, this is how we parent our children. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased to have been a part of that and to have been a part of so many um, other women's lives, black women, white women's lives here in the city. Legacy, legacy, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about that, that work, that volunteer work that got done. Yeah. Uh, that's still getting done. Okay. The last mom that I, whose home I went to, um, to help her with breastfeeding baby is now about 18 months old. Um, so I'm still, still doing this work. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's what we do. My daughter, um, does it and my other children advocate for it. Do you, do you need my mother's number? Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I still do some, some, some counseling with moms. So having someone in the, your circle, I want only to say your community, but having someone in your circle and you could say, do I know anybody that nursed a baby? And people go, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yes, yes. Let me see if I can get your number. And then you get a number. Because it still happens to me all the time. You know, people mm -hmm. call me and say, girl i used to say you were so crazy now i know this girl and she she's white is that okay yes she, mm -hmm. can, you, can you talk can you help us sister out so I, there is something about the educational process about parenting mother attachment what if you don't know someone what if i never met you what if i never went to that lalucci league meeting mm -hmm. would i have been able to change my family tree and for my mother who I, I certainly think was a good mother okay who wanted very much wanted to breastfeed and was the way she describes it was actively discouraged actively discouraged from breastfeeding my father said well you can if you want to you know she she didn't feel that he realized that the role that he could play in the privilege and the active. Uh, yeah. And I later and I later talked to him about this. He said, you don't understand, I didn't have a clue. You know, I'm yeah. he said, it is making me see things in you that I didn't know about my own wife and, and the way she parented you. So that was really helpful. But but back to this notion about if we are able to do this and not just heal ourselves, but heal the planet and, and be a resource, not just during Black Breastfeeding Week, but be a resource to other women who've never seen it, felt it, heard it, tasted it, what, what would have happened to us and what what parenting options, what family options would people not see? You know, if you look at TV or you do just what they tell you in the, in the pediatrician's office, or it's not going to work. Right. You know? And it's not designed to work. And um, I would, I suspect that, again, knowing you as my friend and knowing me, there are like a lot of critical points where I can say, oh, the path not taken, what would have been different? I have five grandchildren and all five of them have been breastfed. There is no doubt in my mind that that tradition not only will continue, but they consider it normal and they, and they are promoters, you yeah. know? And, and personally, I don't care if they breastfeed or not. I mean, my thing is that if you want to, I want to make sure you have the resources and the support and the privilege to do it. If you don't want to, I'd be a little disappointed, but I, I don't think you're a bad mother or a bad parent. But to have these five people freshly minted out, <laughs> um, I, I'm really excited about that. And I think that it is a legacy that I'm really proud of. And I as I listen to you talk, I've realized how much work went into that legacy. You know, um, my, I have two children, a son and a daughter. 
And I think you have a different relationship, not only with nursing a baby girl versus a baby boy. That's that's a topic, another topic. But um, I don't think it ever occurred to my daughter not to breastfeed her baby. I, 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 yeah. Like, of course. Like, and it wasn't for me. And I would know it wasn't for the baby. She just assumed, oh, you have a baby? That's the, the nursing is an extension of a desire to have a child and to and to mother. And that abbreviating that um, is not something that she wanted to do. And my my daughter-in-law, uh, and of course I didn't raise her, came from a home where her four siblings, her siblings were all breastfed. Mm. She wanted to breastfeed, but because at the point that she had uh, her children, her mother had already passed away. She, she and I spoke about that. Oh my God, where, where, where will I get information, resources, support? And, um, my son says that I was off, often too critical, and I, I'm sorry about that. I, I, it was not my intent, but it was, I think, very helpful for her to know that her mother-in-law was supportive and that her mm -hmm. husband was, quote unquote, successfully breastfed, and that he assumes, I don't know if they talked about it ahead of time, that I, I should ask them, he assumed that he would have a wife or a mother, I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to be in a committed, like a, a legal relationship, but I do think you have to be both committed to parenting. And he saw his role, whether he was male or female, but I think he saw his role as being supportive of the mother of his children to nurse. And, and he was very, articulate about that and I was really proud of him mm -hmm. that he he was able to verbalize that and like you said styles of parenting I don't think I've ever heard my grandbabies cry you know like if, if anything it wasn't like people were stumbling over them to pick them up not only did I not hear them cry I I, I saw them raised in an environment where people were attentive to their needs emotionally, you know, nutritionally and attached to them. And, and I think that that's something that I will never take for granted. It, it, it is part of a, of a parenting um, style, you know, this issue of, you know, the baby um, cries um, because the baby is hungry. Well, I, I think there's a learned behavior you know, the baby's not going to, my baby's not going to cry to be fed. I'm watching the baby and, you know, baby starts to squirm and wake up and, you know, um, I'm anticipating that the baby's going to be hungry. So the baby doesn't have to cry um, to get its needs met. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the idea that, I, I don't know about this one though, the idea that the baby cries because its diaper is wet. I'm like, for real? Um, um, but yeah, I, I, the babies just don't cry a lot um, mm -hmm. because their their need their needs are met as, and that includes you know the the parents in the village, mm -hmm. um, in terms of babies' needs getting met. Mm -hmm. um, so again, and uncles and other people, just siblings for sure, siblings and neighbors and yeah, aunties and and people who you know, care about these children and help raise the children. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, even and without a bottle. Yeah. And you're, you, some of what you're saying, I think is also interesting that when I went to the girl's house in Pittsfield for my first La Leche League meeting, that was my first time to see uh, what I would let later think of as a very feminist, women-centered model of your your tribe, your sister group, 
supporting other women. I didn't have sisters or cousins or aunties. I was I was separated from that family and I my, my mother was an only child so I didn't have a big family and my mother hadn't breastfeed and had I not met those women I wouldn't have seen what that group looked like. And yeah. um you and I, you know, we we're friends and stuff but the idea that when we went there you saw kids playing, you saw like a, a different, you know, level of activity, a really child-centered. People would have called it child-centered. I would now call it women-centered. The, the houses were, the, the women ran the house <laughs> and the house were for the women in the house. And uh, we had snacks and we had food. Like when I got there, after they got over the initial shock that there was this black woman at the door, uh, <laughs> You, you want something to eat? You know, like they went into the kitchen and this idea that in order to breastfeed your baby and in order for you to feel comfortable, we want to feed you and nurture you. What do you, what do you like? Would you, would you like a cookie? Would you like a sandwich? Would you like, um, uh, and I'm not talking, talking about going to people's houses and having a whole bunch of fried chicken. I'm, I'm talking about this notion that part of the social group would be socializing and supporting each other, but that we would feed one another and that um, we, we would have snacks and that somehow the nutrition and the nurturing of the women came from other women. So you would be freed up to 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 be available to do that for your baby. You know, like no no one was, even though I had an adorable baby and, I, and you had an adorable baby, I never felt like people were reaching for my baby. I felt like they were reaching for me, you know, like they wanted to be supportive of me. And, um, you know, people- well, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about that um, the sisterhood model mm -hmm. um, that, that I learned at La Leche League. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that, that I learned is, is, is how to feed my babies and feed my family. Mm -hmm. You know, breastfeeding until the baby, you know, decides it's, it's time to, to stop. But what's next? You know, what do you feed your baby next? You know, this, it, this idea that you take a fresh banana and you mash that up and give it to your baby Nobody in my family did that. That just, that was not how babies were, you know, that was not the model, but it, it made sense to me. And, you know, when I, when I saw it, um, you know, the fact that the children were put down on the floor, mm -hmm. crawl around and play, stand up, whatever, you know, they're walking around in these soft leather shoes or bare feet and they're eating healthy food as they transition away from breastfeeding. This was a, a very new model, but I, I was drawn to it. Yeah. You know, this this made sense. We, we we still do that with each other. You know, you come, you sit down, you have you have healthy snack <clears throat> or something really good and baked. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah being being in, in each other's homes was was also an experience for my children in terms of learning about culture. Mm -hmm. Because we lived in a in a very, um, we just lived around black people, mm -hmm. and so going to a La Leche League meeting was an introduction for all of us to to a different culture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that just sort of transitioned too. You know, we just sort of raised the children in a with a whole lot more diversity than in, than I was raised with, and I and my experience of being a mom and having a family my my children consider your children and their family extended family like they don't mm -hmm. have cousins or anything like that but they have mama ginger and they have your family and they have memories i mean like if we were weird you were equally weird or more weird. So, <laughs> so that was, <laughs> and, and so I think that 
to the extent that normalized things that we were choosing made yeah. it a little easier on yeah, our for children. Sure. And what I know from my kids now, I don't know what kind of feedback you get from your adult children, is that they don't have comparable families the way we were comparable. Like my son and his wife, they don't have a comparable uh, peer group mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, 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 again, still interact with people that we met through La Leche League. Um, when my daughter-in-law came along was the first time I heard of Mocha Moms. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this, this organized gathering of black women around breastfeeding and, and parenting children. Um, mm -hmm. I, I hope that's still out there mm -hmm. um, as an additional resource for- I think, for it, I, think I, I think I saw it on the internet. I think it's still there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I, I still encourage women to to go to La Leche League um, to to have the hood spot takes because they they have I believe still some good things going on there. I don't yeah. know about the chest feeding thing, but uh, <laughs> they, they definitely know still know about breastfeeding. I'm assuming. So. <laughs> well, we'll save that for another time. I'm I'm gonna close now, and I really want to thank you and and again honor this time. But I, I also want to bring this notion about, I will be doing a series of conversation, dialogues uh, of speaking to elders. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I, I just think it's such a rich way, not just to have an oral history, but to actually know that there were people out there we didn't know who they were but that we could go to them as a resource so if i if you had asked me who in my world view was an elder that had quote unquote successfully nursed her baby not separated from the baby you know how they negotiated intimate relationships with partners or their fathers or their mothers i can honestly say that other than my grandmother I didn't know anybody. And I'm mm -hmm. so lucky. I feel privileged not only to have had a husband who was supportive, family who was supportive. I had a grandma that I could call. All right. And um, she negotiated things between my mother and I. Mm -hmm. And she also allowed me to be kind and loving to my mother because my grandmother told me what you said it is a privilege that your mother did not enjoy and you have it so be nice to her you know and um my grandmother has been dead a long time but I often reflect on what she told me about nursing babies her experience as a breastfeeding mom uh, she didn't have a supportive husband at the time, but that came later. And, and the other thing that she really taught me about was not leaving your children with strangers. Whoa. And taught me about what was, I had, <clears throat> oh, so good. I had the notion that the doctor and the nurse and the hospital, that these were medical events. And that, that has nothing to do with your family. You know, like, so feeding and nurturing and intimacy is something that you can learn about from, from the elders. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that was just such a rich thing. And um, I remember a couple of times when I did leave my babies, I didn't do, I didn't leave the baby much with my first, but my second, there was a lot more going on. Um, I remember she pulled me aside and she said, you must not leave your baby. Mm. It's too soon. It's too mm. late. Mm. And I was like, what? And she, she often would fill in for me, but she would say, I am no substitute for you. 
And this is what happens when you're gone. Mm. And how do you feel about, you know, if you have to leave your baby to feel better, what's wrong with you? Mm. Who, who told you to have this baby if, if, making, if, if having a baby was making you sick or causing a conflict? I don't think I had any other elders in my life to school me around that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother- how, how lucky you were. How lucky I was, how lucky I was. But also my grandmother- was very opposed to bottle feeding and formula. Mm -hmm. it did, didn't know why I didn't explore that with her. And my grandmother would say, she won't take a bottle from me. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's how I found out that my grandmother nursed my baby. And I found out that African tradition of if you have to leave your baby, you leave it with your sister or another woman that's nursing your baby. And mm -hmm. when she told me that, and I heard that, I had had the experience of nursing other people's babies, but it was like a secret. I, you know, I, I thought it was like one a step of child abuse or something. And she reframed that for me in a way that was very consistent, not only with African traditions, but also consistent with the baby is ill, the baby is sick. You don't know what that cow ate. You don't know what was in that bottle. Mm -hmm. she, she said, if the baby has to take a bottle and your baby has to take a bottle from the father for somebody else, you need to be asking yourself, why is that? It wasn't a criticism. It was a really philosophical existential question. And this was not somebody who was prone to that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. where, where are you going at that is so important that you have to leave your baby? They can't wait till you get back. Yeah. Who are you with? What were you doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I and, hope. And, and whatever it is, it, it can wait. Whatever it is, it can wait. And, and. And not just the child suffers, but you suffer. You are suffering. And um, this notion about this connection with elders, like I want, I want the people who are watching this to know as we close, we love you. We know that what we're suggesting may be difficult. What you may want to do is difficult, but we're here and we have something that will help you get through those times that aren't so difficult. And that when you need another voice whispering, hmm, Mama Ginger might, might understand this or might be willing to talk this through with me. Mama Jackie might be willing to, mm -hmm. I can call somebody, I will share a phone number. Um, I, I, I will be, you're 70 already, aren't you? I'm gonna be 70 soon. I but I, I have had the experience of people saying to me, I wish I had met you sooner. I didn't know that someone like you existed. I, did, I didn't know that your daughter learned that from you or Mama Ginger or Mama Suji. I didn't know your, your son parents in a way that I haven't seen a father do mm -hmm. Where did that come from? So this this business of hope and legacy and tradition, mm -hmm. we we get to keep something wonderful alive. Yes, while, while we're still here. And uh, my, I have a granddaughter who's twenty. Oh and, yes, and a, and a granddaughter who will be three next week. And one of my prayers, one of my prayers is that I will live long enough mm. that if they want to, if they want to have a baby, um, that I will be there mm -hmm. uh, to encourage them and uh, help them. And that if they read the book or they listen to the YouTube, you know, one of my grandkids said, anything you need to know is on YouTube. So they'll be able to look at the YouTube video and say, oh, this, th there were elders in the community who, who kept the tradition alive. And when they stole our babies and we, 
we we nursed white babies and didn't get to nurse our own babies and and our own babies didn't know what had happened to us we we're healing that we are healing that right now and that we can be sisters with other women and other mammals around them. any other mammal that is separated from their baby it is certain death the certain absolute certain death separation is certain death so for the, for those of us that want to at least keep keep the tradition alive we, we we can show you how it's not it's not hard it no i, I think it is hard <laughs> I, I think it is hard you think it's hard i think it's hard i think it's i think you have to learn it you know, I, well, I don't think it's the kind of thing that you just decide at the last minute you're going to do. I think you, as you're thinking about becoming a parent and when that's going to happen for you, as you're thinking about after I have this baby, then what? You know, what mm -hmm. happens the first week? What happens the first year? It's, it's a very involved, it should be very involved in terms of decision making. Um, not just how to feed the baby, but when to have the baby, you know, who's going to take care of this baby um, that, that you're bringing into this world. Um, but, but make the commitment if you make the decision, you know, make the decision to, to have a baby, make the commitment to stay with this baby um, and um, have that attachment there. Um, whether it's through breastfeeding, um, your parenting style, all of these things are, are part of the, just such an important set of decisions that, that we have to make. Do you think, I, I think we can make them in advance? When I say it's not hard, that's, I guess, when I say it's not hard, maybe the details don't come initially, but, but the, it's not a hard decision if you make that decision. You, you know what I mean? Like once you make it, yeah, all of the details are hard. <laughs> you know, the figuring out part. But I think you spoke a lot about what I I don't know. I I thought you addressed this notion that it's a constant decision every day I'm going to do this. And this is how I want to do it. That's that's what I meant. Um, I, I I just want to be clear. I I think it is, it is it is very hard. Okay. I mean, what what I did was very hard. Was it was is the was it the greatest thing that I've done? Absolutely. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Every single day of it. Was <laughs> it hard? Yes. <laughs> um, um, mm -mm. Yes. I, I thought it was hard. Mm -hmm. Um. But it was it was worth every day of it. Still is. But it was hard. Okay. But you know, I did it. You 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 can do it. You know, surround yourself with with good people. Um, that makes all the difference in the world. Okay. Well, thank you, Ginger Welch. Thank you for celebrating. Black Breastfeeding Week with me, 2022. All right, and 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 years to come. And years to come. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs>